I'm Jack Jordan, former superintendent of the Northside School District, and today it is a museum's great pleasure to interview Dr. Carl Raba, who is, in many people's mind, one of the strongest leaders that Northside has ever experienced from the standpoint of the school board, the community, the PTA, the Northside Education Foundation. And Carl, it's my pleasure to be with you this morning. Well, thank you, Jack, for inviting me. Uh, anything that deals with Northside ISD uh, has a, a lot of attention uh, and uh, priority in, in my life. And I appreciate that, Carl, and we appreciate you coming. Tell us what brought you to Northside. How, well, how did you end up in Northside? Well, uh, after uh, getting my uh, doctorate in civil engineering at I then lived in Memphis, Tennessee for a period of time. Uh, we came back to Texas and of all places lived in a little home that we had at Lake McQueenie. Uh, and then a few years later moved to San Antonio and ended up in Northside uh, School District. And it was a wise choice for my five children for their benefit. How were you involved in the district before you served on the school board? Well, my children are uh, joiners, and so they were in a lot of extra curricular activities and uh, in the PTA. I've always considered the PTA to be a very, very important element in the support of any uh, school district. Tell us about uh, how you decided to run for a place on the north side board. Well, much to my surprise, I waited evening to be a candidate and uh, in a very growing and dynamic school district some of the trustees visited me um, and I'll tell you who made my mind up it was uh, my deceased wife Bunny Jean. I'm sitting there at 11:30 at night listening to them talk to me after a school board meeting and as I'm pondering what my answer would be she said he accepts and so I became a candidate What were some of the goals as you learned about the district and saw the need for some of the goals that you had, Carl? Well, the district was growing very rapidly and we had financial problems in the sense that commercial development had not come west around Loop 410. We didn't have the malls that were over on the east side and um, actually the demand for education was outrunning our uh, uh, revenue stream. So we had to recognize that the the basis of any educational system is predicated upon a dedicated and capable faculty. And whoever preceded me was very, very wise in raising that. And what I wanted to do was to get to a point where we could recognize the value of the faculty and benefits and in compensation. And that was one of my biggest goals. Who was superintendent when you came on the board? Ed Cody. Ed Cody was uh, my uh, mentor, uh, and I never will forget, I said, Ed, I, I believe I need to find out more about the budget, and uh, because it's going to come up for uh, uh, approval. And I said, I'm going to block out an hour and come over to uh, see the budget. He, kind of chuckled and so uh, several days later I showed up and uh, I said where's the budget and I saw about two foot high stack of paper and I said I think I need an executive summary to begin with and then I'll block out a day and someone can help me through it. But Ed was really quite an individual. He answered the phone calls when the parents called. He was accessible. Uh, he had very very sage advice for all of us. And with that budget and understanding the budget, I assume Gordon Meckler was involved as a, a director of finance. He was there, and uh, Gordy did a wonderful job for the district. What offices did you hold on the board? Well, I came on the board. I was on the board between um, 1973 and 1982. In the first year that I was there, Jack, I was appointed secretary of the board. 
and then from 1973 to 1975, I was chairman of the building committee, and I think part of that was uh, because of my engineering background. Uh, and then uh, 1975 through 1981, I served as chairman of the board of trustees. Dr. Rama, when, when you owned the building committee and chaired the building committee, was that about the time that we went from having one architect to an architectural pool to do the work, or was, had that already been put in place? No, that was occurring about the same time that I arrived, where the, the growth and the demand and the volume of work coming through the district um, really justified and mandated using a pool of architects and engineers. Who were some of the other board members? during your time? Well, one of my Peggy uh, uh, friends was uh, Bill Tex Thornton, Raul Fernandez, uh, Bill Tuttle was a CPA, he brought tremendous insight in the financial side. Um, Ernie DeWinney was on the board. Uh, Bill, uh, uh, Bob Beard, coming out of uh, the oil and gas industry. Uh, and also Wayne Nance, who had a had a finger on the pulse rate of development and the growth rates within and, and the areas to be developed within the district since he was building industry. And he didn't underestimate anything. Did he? <laughs> no, he didn't. And uh, his background was accounting, and uh, so he he knew what good thoughts and wishes were going to cost. Tell me. Um, Kind of, you, you mentioned the finances, and the governance, and policies, and laws that you had to adjust to, and growth. T tell us some of the ways the board sought to cope with that. Well, it, it was rather interesting. I, I told people on a number of these that when we built uh, an elementary school, we were limited in funds that we had in any of the landscaping that was done was uh, very de minimis at most. And we turned to the PTAs to help us. The PTAs really pitched in and helped a lot, not only with respect to landscaping, but other things that uh, we needed that within- Library? Absolutely. Library uh, other things that we needed within that building shell to enhance and raise the quality of the education to the students to the highest level. Uh, the parents were engaged, the parents were involved. So, there's been a continuum of involvement of the parents, and the PTA, and PTA Council, which helps to coordinate some of the activities among elementary schools, and high schools, and middle schools, cut out some of the conflicts as if that were possible today. Um, what, what did you, what were your thoughts at the time that all of a sudden, the Westover Hills, Sea World, High Destination Resort, when, when that first started, what were your ideas then about that and its effect on the district? Well, they were very positive for a couple of reasons, obviously monetarily, but you were bringing in new money, new people into the community that we could use in other ways to be mentors on the school campuses. Uh, and also we needed to realize where that first windfall of dollars was going to go and it was going to go to the faculty to be more competitive in the compensation that we provided them and their benefits. Uh, quite frankly, I was uh, uh, weary of uh, always uh, being in the dust of Northeast when it came to that. One of the interesting things that uh, people like Jimmy Elrod and others have mentioned was the fact that we were constantly on an uphill battle from a financial standpoint. And quite frankly, when people that started developing Westover Hills and the Wiseman family, it's really that's an Aggie connection. Oh, Charlie and Pat Wiseman are very dear friends. Uh, I, I really thought at the time, what a great opportunity Expressway, clear up a little bit of that, helps some, and uh, 
all of that land that didn't turn to single family residences, but gave us some a commercial start. Uh, and it, it's on target this day to continue to develop that area. Microsoft coming in there with a huge operation. Well, and uh, you've got Lowe's also, uh, right. data, the data centers. Uh, when, when one takes a look at uh, Northside, people don't realize how large it is and only a fraction of it has been developed thus far. Uh, whereas uh, some of the other school districts are fairly well uh, up to their boundaries in terms of undeveloped property, so it'll only be expansion and modification of, of new schools. Basically built. Or of existing schools. Yeah. Uh, one of the, I remember, I don't want to make a guess how many years ago, but I can remember one time when you were on the board talking about basically Mainland Drive and Bandera being the centroid of the district. And that's still pretty close to the population and to the growth potential. Well, with respect to the population, that's probably true, but I think the geographical centroid of the district is a lotus. The lotus. So, and people hear that and say, oh, you got to be kidding, that's the northern boundary. No, that's... Not close. But we still got a long way to go. We're right up uh, within a mile or so of Bandera and the northern boundary. It, it's hard to ask you, but I know that you, you have some high points of your service on the board that stand out to you. And please enumerate some of those, Carl. Tell us about some of those things that not only are you proud of, you helped look at the improvement that came about in the district during your service. Well, because of my engineering background, I was very interested in making sure that we built schools that had low maintenance costs and we got the most for the taxpayer's dollar. And that uh, we didn't accept anything less than what we had bargained to pay for. But, but I'm gonna jump over to the side and say, I worked with a great group of people. The faculty that was here was not here because we paid the most. The faculty that was here Jeff, were dedicated to exciting the students and to allowing them to reach their full potential. Because we all had a common vision, a vision of supporting and serving the student. And we knew that we were going to wake, work our way up that slippery slope, so to speak. And we finally did. And I'm so proud of everyone that's responded for it. Well put. Well put. Um, and, and typical of, of you, Carl, uh, wanting to put credit where the action hit the, the staff. It pulls it off, the teachers. They're the only, uh, uh, you might say, one-man teams or golfers. The rest of us, we're all, we're all working together, and it goes back to team. Together, everyone achieves more. And that's why it was so important to engage, which was very successfully done in the district, the PTA Council, to keep them informed, to have a good line of communications, to be able to be sincere, frank, and, and honest with the faculty and everyone had confidence in each other and trusted each other. Share some anecdotes from this time period that you can't share with Well, Robert. I never will forget. Ed Cody would bring in some sandwiches before the board meeting since we were all coming from work. One day I made a joke. I said, Ed, can't we get something better than sandwiches? And he said, well, what would you like? And I said, what about Chinese food with chopsticks? And he made some notes and I said, Ed, I'm only kidding, sandwiches are fine. I never will forget that. Had I not uh, seen, him, or seen him taking those notes, we probably would have had a, ch a Chinese food at the next meeting. Um, and you like Chinese food? Well, I certainly do. I, I, but uh, that, uh, other antidote, I'll tell you uh, something that did upset me. I asked some of our board members to go to a National School Board Association meeting and it was in San Francisco. And the Express News comes out and lambasts us. Uh, trustees spending school district money. 
Uh, Ed Cody and I went down to see the publisher and I said, look, we're all paying for our own expense. We're doubling up in rent. The registration is being paid for by the district and now you've embarrassed the same people I asked to leave their jobs and to take this trip for the benefit of the, uh, of the district. You also indicated that San Francisco was a, a, a cushy place to go. And I said, well, you know, I don't believe that there's about four places in the United States that's big enough to host the National School Board Association. Uh, and so I, I feel like you need uh, to uh, make it an apology, which never was forthcoming. But it, we needed to set the record straight. And uh, the good news was the group that it had agreed to go, uh, we did go, and we brought back valuable information. I think that um, one of the things that you brought to the board from my vantage point, the Cody's vantage point, was that when you saw something that needed to be spoken to, you were not timid about talking about it. And you would do it in a respectful way, and whatever chain of command or whatever editorial board or editor that you needed to talk to, you would suggest that it be done or you would lead out in doing that. I think that's important. Well, thank you, Jack. What, another one of the reasons that I as a responsibility of the trustees is for the right mix of backgrounds and some turnover in the trustees so that new ideas can, can come come to bear. Um, oh, another anecdote. What is it, Wednesday Mexican food day in the cafeterias? Used to be. Okay. <laughs> well, that's when I'd like to go visit a campus and I'd call up uh, Ed and I said, look, I'm going to go to this campus, tell the principal I'm coming. I don't want him to be shocked. This isn't any type of, uh, of an inspection, but I'd like to meet with him in his office for a walk around. I'd like to meet some of the faculty and he can buy me lunch in the cafeteria. And uh, that was one of the things. I, I got, that was a twofer. <laughs> I was able to eat Mexican food uh, with the students and the faculty and I was able to uh, visit with our uh, faculty members, the principal, and see the students. You can read a lot when you look in a classroom. You can read a lot when you see those students. Uh, just, uh, you, you can see whether they're all totally engaged. I'm glad to hear you say that because that's something I believe in very strongly. Carl, you, you mentioned about how the board ought to have different backgrounds, bring different issues and professions to the table. Um, where did you grow up and where did you go to school? And uh, Give us that background about your uh, life coming up to your service on the board. Because it's different from what some people might suspect. Well, uh, you're right. I was born and raised in San Antonio and uh, went to parochial school. I went through uh, middle school at St. Gerard's on the southeast side of San Antonio. And then I went to Central Catholic High School. Um, after I entered the military program at Central, I stayed in that mode because my father encouraged me and I was very fortunate to go to Texas A&M University. Uh, where I studied engineering and subsequently was commissioned uh, an officer in the United States Army. Um, when my children were growing up and we moved around quite a bit, they were involved in the parochial school programs, excuse me, the public school programs rather than the parochial. And so I became very familiar with, with those programs in Houston, um, in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, education is education and we just saw the value in it. Buddy was very, very dedicated to education. Uh, early on we took a look at what we were able to do in terms of uh, our treasury and our time. And uh, the family unit is very, very important, but one of the building blocks in that foundation is education. And that's where we tried to contribute our treasury and our time and feel like it was a good investment. One of the things that I think is so important for people to hear about your relationship with Bunny and how she helped you in college. Well, uh, she was my banker. 
She, uh, she supported me through undergraduate and graduate school. And uh, uh, you talk about something humorous. Uh, my mother-in-law uh, asked one day, uh, asked Bunny one day, is he ever going to stop going to school? And uh, so that's, that was, again, part of our recognition of the uh, multiplier effect of education. That's an interesting point. And I'm sure that you stopped going to school as some people would think, but I don't think Carl Rava has ever stopped going to school on the things that he needs to do and needs to learn and needs to work on. Your formal education prepares you for a lifetime of learning. And uh, the world changes very quickly in our engineering profession, uh, dealing with the business as well as the technology side of it. Uh, it's a uh, it's a full-time job keeping up with that and then doing your eight to five job. Tell us about school that's very dear to your heart that bears a Robin name. Uh, that was an incredible surprise and incredible honor uh, when uh, the Robin Elementary School uh, was named after us and Bunny uh, had a particular pride in it and uh, the relationship with the students there. I, I go to the promotion uh, ceremony every year to see those youngsters heading off to uh, another campus. And I walk around and I see those dynamic classrooms, I see those smiling faces, uh, nice faculty, uh, great principal and vice principal. Um, and it makes me feel good actually makes me feel better seeing what's inside rather than the name of the building because I know that we're having an effect on children's lives. Great point, great point. Uh, tell us about your family. I know you're proud of them. You, you mentioned the family of value, the core, the uh, things that have uh, been important to your life. Tell us about your family. Well, I have five children. Um, he, uh, actually, they took after their father. It was hard getting them out of school because they wanted additional degrees. Uh, the oldest is Gary. Gary has a doctorate in engineering. I have uh, Nancy is my next child, who is an attorney. William is, uh, came out of the School of Architecture, uh, Building Sciences. Um, Cheryl uh, has a, uh, two degrees and she's a licensed professional counselor. And then our youngest daughter, Kathy, is an attorney also. So many times, Jack, people will ask me, that, uh, do you have a family? And I will respond, yes, five, but I've saved three. And after a distressful pause, I'll say <laughs> two of them are lawyers. But uh, they've given me nine wonderful grandchildren and uh, they're all healthy. They're all very, very good uh, youngsters. And I'm, I'm just, thank God for, for them, that valuable gift that he gave me. One of the other things that I, I think goes, must be said, that it goes part of uh, your continuing involvement in, in the district and the way that you Tell us about your relationship with Northside Education Foundation. Well, uh, that was a thought that Bunny Jean had. And as you know, uh, we lost Bunny Jean back in 2003. There were a number of important initiatives that were undertaken by the Foundation, but Bunny, that they needed to have an endowment. And she made a uh, statement, we're going to have our first gala, which was, the gala was in essence a seated dinner with some speakers. And uh, uh, I said, well, who's going to be the speaker? I don't know yet. Well, Bunny and I went up to uh, Duke, to uh, the Carolinas, to see a football game. And as we're in the line, uh, going to the ticket counter to return to San Antonio, 
I looked up and I saw Scott O'Grady. Uh, Basher 9 was his call sign. And I told Bunny who he was. She says, I want him to speak. So she went up and introduced herself and I said hi to him. And she invited him to be the speaker at an unknown place on a certain day for the benefit of the Northside Education Foundation. He was used to unknown places, though, wasn't he? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, after being shot down in Bosnia, you know, he was quite a hero. And he told Bunny Jean, well, you'll have to talk to my scheduler. She says, what's that? Well, he's a gentleman that books it and does the contract. She said, understand, we don't have any money. We'll pay for you to come down, but we don't have any money. And uh, so they continued to talk. Scott came down. It was a sellout crowd at the, the Hyatt Hotel downtown, and that was the beginning of it. And if I remember correctly, people were so inspired, someone got some bread baskets and started moving them around the table like you would see at church, and people were writing additional checks and putting money into it. Uh, because of the subsequent leadership uh, in, in that program, it's been able to do incredible things in terms of funding educational enrichment program. And there's competition from the faculty to be given those grants. And uh, it, it's, it's very good, very strong. And the faculty really does apply for these grants and uh, work in teams or singularly about it. And uh, Ann and I really love to go on the prize patrol and when we deliver the fruits of the foundation to dedicated faculty who determine what's needed in their classroom, in their school, and worked at it in a team group situation or uh, individual. Well, they're all going continuing education and enhancement programs to bring new ideas back to the campus and to the district. And I like to see teams go to be able to come back and then to disseminate those ideas, sure. those new programs. Uh, incredibly important and you've got to you got to know what's happening in the rest of the world. I think you went to San Francisco to kind of see what's happening from a school board standpoint. Yes sir. Uh, Carl, I, I know it's dangerous for me to, to ask you this question but I want you to cover anything we haven't talked about from the more or less prepared questions that we had. You, you do, you go in anywhere you want to go. Well, Jack, looking back that evening at 11.30 uh, in the evening and me proofing engineering reports and uh, being invited to be a, a candidate for the school board and uh, my wife accepting for me up through the times as of today, uh, I wouldn't have had it any different. I have, as, as when I've been involved in undertakings or programs that haven't even met my minimum expectations, but when I see what's happening within this district and I see the leadership in the classrooms and I see the leadership on the campus and I see the leadership at the district office and I see this team effort and I see the products coming out of the campus. The educational program, the success of it is really measured by our graduates. Uh, I'm proud to have uh, been involved with it. Uh, I didn't do anything that I would have done given the same opportunity. And um, time well spent. Uh, I love this district. Well put. Um so many things put in place during your service, but continues to be put in place. Well, while we talked about the foundation, what, what is the endowment in the foundation now, roughly? You know, I wish I knew. I'm not sure right now. It's well over a million dollars. Oh, it's now. several. Well, several basic, million. well, Bunny Jean said we're going to have a million in there in X number of years. And when that deadline occurred and she had already passed, I think we had really in two. So, uh, it's, it's a number of millions of dollars. And I think uh, is William's wife is on the right. president of the group or 
on the board of the foundation. Well, well Mary Robin Mary. Williams' uh, wife um, is a member of the uh, foundation board, but she was also the uh, chairman of uh, the uh, annual gala. Very nice, that's right. Now, Carl, it's been a pleasure to sit down and spend some time with you. You emphasize the things that are important to education today. They've always been important. And your love of kids and seeing those kids move forward and uh, progress, it's a pleasure to spend some time with you. Well, Jack, I can't uh, end without saying this. The continuum that we have in any type of business venture or educational institution for those individuals in the leadership role, such as you and Ed Cody and others, uh, y'all are the glue that keeps everything together, that listens to the advice of the Board of Trustees and then makes it happen. Y'all are the ones that are working 24-7 to make a vision a reality. And without you and your colleagues that have served previously as a superintendent, uh, we might not be sitting here talking about all of our successes today. Thanks, Jack. My pleasure.